Das Mittelmeer ist ein Wasserspiegel, der fortwährend verdunstet. Hätte das Mittelmeer keine Zuflüsse, wären sie künstlich gesperrt, so würde sich sein Wasserspiegel durch einfache Verdunstung jährlich um 1,65 Meter senken. Auf dieser Tatsache beruht das Projekt Atlantropa. Was das Mittelmeer verdunstet, erhält es automatisch wieder über die Straße von Gibraltar. Europe of the 1920s was both a time of immense prosperity and rebuilding and also of great turmoil. In the aftermath of the Great War, the nations of Europe were either rebuilding, finding their footing once again, or establishing themselves as new nations. One constant was the atmosphere of opportunity. Many thinkers of the time ponder new ways to build things with the primary goal of fixing humanity's suffering. A common theme was that the European nations were getting too crowded. Many different engineering projects were thought up to fix this issue, although one stands out more than others. A man named Hermann Sorgel saw this zeitgeist as his pathway for the implementation of his idea. He called it Atlantropa. Atlantropa was a gigantic engineering idea meant to solve Europe's land, food, and power problems and integrate Africa into the European world. Atlantropa was a plan to drain the Mediterranean Sea. This would lower sea levels in different parts of the sea basin, revealing new land for people to move into and grow crops on. Most of this new land area would be in the former Adriatic Sea, which would shrink drastically in the Aegean Sea, along the coast of North Africa, the Balearic Islands, and Sardinian Corsica would become joined together. Three colossal dams would conduct the draining of the sea. The first would be made at Gibraltar and would block the Atlantic from the Mediterranean. A second would be made in the Dardanelles across the Sea of Marmara and would cut off the Black Sea from the Mediterranean. Once sea levels had dropped 100 meters, a dam would be made between Sicily and Tunisia. Two massive roads crossed the first and third dams and would connect Paris to Dakar and Berlin to Cape Town. Later on, a fourth dam was also planned. However, this one would be made along the Congo River and would be meant to divert water to refill the Lake Chad Basin. Water would then go into two massive man-made lakes that resembled inland seas, named Lake Congo and then the Chad Sea. All of this excess water would help to turn the Sahara green again, and provide tons of fresh water for people and to irrigate crops. All four of these dams were meant to generate tons of hydroelectric electricity. Here are some of the numbers for you to consider. The dams were projected to create 110,000 megawatts of electricity. Nearly half, around 50,000 megawatts, would come from the Gibraltar Dam alone. The western Mediterranean would be lowered 100 meters, and the eastern half lowered by about 200 meters. Lowering each part of the sea would create 576,000 square kilometers of new land to colonize and use for agriculture. This project would also create a titanic amount of jobs. The workforce projected for the Gibraltar Dam construction alone would have been around 200,000 people. Not to mention the other projects, the need for raw materials, and the growth of jobs needed for upkeep of these large projects. All of this sounds great. But then again, this idea was so great to begin with. Why did it never come to pass? There are a few reasons why Atlantropa never occurred. The first and most obvious reason is that the entire idea is absolutely insane, not just in scale, but in money and materials. Needing to have 200,000 workers to create one dam should be enough to see the grand scale of this project. This labor and material cost is unsustainable, and in the grand scheme of things would have made it nearly impossible to keep up with the demand. Another important thing to consider when talking about the feasibility of this idea was the geopolitics of the time. As we all know, Europe during the 1920s and 30s was nowhere close to stable. Getting nations who were mortal enemies of each other to consent to having their natural resources drained and economies intertwined seems like the perfect scenario for significant conflict. Another important thing to understand is that this integration of economies would have only benefited the Mediterranean European nation, their colonies in Africa, and the larger European nations that were able to reach these markets. For example, Germany would have been able to make money from exports to Italy and other African colonies. Sweden and Finland may not be able to since their infrastructure did not connect to the larger systems of Central Europe. 
This is a utopian project. And Europe at that time was not a utopia, especially with World War II happening a decade after Sorgel proposed this idea. Let us also talk about the environmental effects of the Atlantropa project. Sorgel claimed that it could only be positive environmental effects from his project. He argued that the vast amounts of hydroelectric power would be enough to allow the world to move away from fossil fuels, and the new farmland would be a great way to combat hunger. He also argued that since the Sahara would be green, and large bodies of water would either be enlarged or created in Africa, there could only be access to more fresh water, new farmland, and more raw materials. While it is true that large lakes would allow for the greening of the Sahara, the negative environmental consequences would be severe. The closing of the Mediterranean would halt the Gulf Stream. To say that this would be devastating is an understatement. The warm Gulf Stream water allows Europe to have a temperate climate and practice agriculture at a latitude that would usually freeze over. Stopping this current would cause much of northern Europe to become too cold for agriculture. All the new land created could cover this loss of arable land, except for one massive problem. The Mediterranean's evaporation would leave behind salty soil that could not grow food, and the remaining seawaters would become too concentrated with salt to support sea life. So while the growth of industry would help an economy, agriculture would be irreparably devastated, and many people would starve as fish could not be caught and grain could not be grown. All in all, the environmental impacts of this mega project alone doomed it from the start. We should be very grateful that this never even started construction. So what do the rest of the world think of this? Most of the other engineers and thinkers across the rest of the world thought this was a crazy idea. The Americans simply did not care because of the distance between themselves and Europe. Countries in Asia did not necessarily care because of the rising tensions between China and Japan. At this point in time, people of Africa had no voice in what was going to occur since they were all European colonies at this time. The only people that were open to the idea were the German engineers and thinkers. During World War II, Sergel pitched the Atlantropa idea to the German government. He argued that in a world where Asia was to be united and the Americas were to be united, it was important to unify Europe, parts of the Middle East, and Africa together. The German government unilaterally rejected his plan. That says a lot. Following the conclusion of World War II, Sergel would advocate for his idea until his death in 1952. The Atlantropa Mega Project, while grandiose and by most accounts preposterous, is still important to today. This project was one of the first ways that engineering had been proposed to solve some kind of environmental problem. And to this day, there are ideas and plans that are floated from time to time to connect Africa and Europe today through the Strait of Gibraltar. Though, instead of one massive hydroelectric dam, bridges and tunnels are the plans going forward. Will Atlantropa ever happen? It never will. But it is a fascinating thought experiment about what mankind could do in a utopian world where science and engineering were used to solve problems instead of causing war. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed, hit the like button, leave a comment down below telling me what you thought, and maybe subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified every time I upload a new history video. Thank you so much again for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Have a nice day. The Dam of Gibraltar is under construction. Millions of square miles of cornland would emerge from the sea. Simultaneously, technical suppositions could be provided to produce immense water power for electric energy.